Hello there and welcome back to a, I guess a more serious video today. It's nothing bad, don't worry, but it's just going to be more of a channel update. We haven't had one for a while. In fact, the only channel update I've ever done on this channel was to announce I'd be switching from Star Wars theories into Lego and it's one of the best choices I've made because I have much more fun making Lego content and just building, showing off my creations than theorizing about Star Wars, which gets a bit repetitive after a while. You can see the pattern they're following and you can't blame them. It makes money, but that is a whole conversation for a complete another time as I have a handful of bullet points I just want to cover and where this channel's heading, what's happening this year, how I'm able to make these videos and really this is a video just to say thank you to everyone that is supporting. We're closing up on not only 700 subscribers for the month, but a thousand subscribers is coming very close. It feels like it's only been a few weeks since we were at 500. It's been about two months, which still is crazy to think that last year we were a lot further than we are right now. So thank you to all the support we'll be getting on this channel. And I do edit all my videos myself. I record everything myself. So it's sort of a one man band, but I do have my fiance that helps out with quite a few different things. And the first bullet point I've got just says two years of YouTube. This is officially my two years of YouTube today. I took a hiatus for a year. I do have a year of missing content. And as I said, we only started making Lego about 10 months ago, interweaved with everything else. So it was a very hectic time for making videos. But tomorrow's actually my six months of daily uploads as well. So it's great that they've fallen sort of together. It's a milestone that really does need to be celebrated. Every milestone early on should be celebrated. I guess as you get further, they get a few farther apart. But it is really special to hit their milestones. And I couldn't have done it without all of you who watch, support, subscribe, like, and even go support my projects on ideas and all my rebrickable models that are for sale or even the free ones just by downloading the free ones. You're supporting the channel in some way. So thank you to everyone that supported Master Moldy on any and every platform. And because of all that support, we are able to move on to bigger, better things. Of course, the Lego City is absolutely thriving. Yesterday, we added some vehicles and minifigures back. And soon, I'm going to start working on that new tower with the calf starting off on the ground floor. And that is not the only thing as we've got Minecraft right next to it. We'll get started on that soon. I really do want to get it done sooner in the year rather than later. We've got all this space which is currently taken up by a giant Lego plush. I might speak about that in a minute because there's a fun story behind that. But we've got all that space, a full 48 by 48 base plate to build whatever we want amongst Star Wars. Of course, we've got a bunch of shows coming out 25 years of Lego Star Wars, we're definitely going to make use of that space this year. And there's just so many other things. We've got some giant mocks like that, Captain Rex giant figure that I created based on Lego's model. The video's up for that. We've also got the Veneta, which is something you can purchase, a MIDI Scout Veneta ship, which will go very nicely with the brand new Invisible Hand, which honestly looks amazing of course we've got all of the rumors and releases videos every month the new releases which do let me know if you want me to change the dates on them because a lot of the time you'll want to know which sets you can pick up the first of every month and me releasing the video the first of every month perhaps i could do it a few days sooner but a lot of the time it just helps me to get the most up-to-date sets in case they release one a bit too late but i could always release that on the last of every month so you can watch it the night before you go to a lego store perhaps you're staying up to order online and just want to know all the new sets because a lot of the time lego site isn't the easiest they got so many sets coming out in two months time or like the ornithocopter so many months in advance i think that was like five or six months ahead of time they announced that just to get it with all the other big releases at the end of last year and even if you pre-ordered it, I'm sure at some point you probably forgot that was even coming, which would be a lovely surprise to receive that unknowingly. But do let me know if there's any other videos that you want rescheduled and would prefer them sooner or later. They're the only two that really I schedule. The rest of them are just as they come, depending on what I'm doing on that day. But we also have a, another massive milestone that we've hit, and that is unlocking members. Now, I understand 
the channel's still quite small. There's not really that many perks that members can provide at this stage. I don't do any live streaming, which is something I'd like to do in the future, but I think that's a few years down the line. But if you did want to go that extra mile and support the channel, you can get one of two milestones at the minute. The first one just unlocks some badges and cool emojis, which hopefully by the time this video goes out, I will have had sorted. If not, do keep an eye out for them. And second one just gives you a shout out at the end of the video. It's a bit more. I think the first one is £1 and the second one is £3 every month. £3 is a lot of money every month. That definitely adds up the longer it goes on. So you will have a shout out at the end of the video. Of course, I'll set that up when I get my first lot of members. And I think I also said you can get a sneak peek at all of my LEGO orders. That's not just through LEGO.com. Anytime I pick up LEGO and plan on making a video on it, or perhaps I don't even plan on making a video on it, I'll send a image through on the community tab, perhaps do a little short or a small video, dependent on the size of the order, and just let you know what I picked up as soon as I picked it up. It's a way for you to keep ahead of the videos and perhaps give your insight in what you'd like to come out first perhaps. If I've got multiple sets I'll be reviewing, I'll definitely whack up a members poll asking which set you'd like to see first. So if you are interested in becoming a member, do hit that join button next to the subscribe button. And as I said, I don't see it being too popular now, but definitely as the channel grows, that priority response is gonna be a big thing for members but my fiance did actually design all the badges so as you go on as your membership is lengthened you do get some special badges alongside your name and of course the emojis are going to be well worth the price so i did say that i would be telling the story of this figure i saw her in a charity shop it's a giant lego plush and normally they're about 15 to 25 pound i always wanted to pick up one of the star wars ones but i managed to grab that for a little over two pound i think it was two pound 50 gave it a nice clean and it's my first lego plush honestly i just couldn't say no to it i actually walked past it the first time and then the next day i was back there and it was a sign i just had to pick that up and that is the case for a lot of lego events and news you just have to be in the right place at the right time I'm usually on Lego's website or Brickset every time I'm on the computer just to see if there's any new announcements. And of course, I don't really cover any of the releases till the end of the month, but I'd still like to stay ahead of the game because if I only saw them once a month, I would have no idea which sets I've already done a video on. I mean, it's complicated enough trying to bookmark the ones that I haven't seen once I see them for the first time. I get so confused with some of the similar sets, but... It is a whole bunch of fun making these videos for you and especially the rumours and releases go so appreciated so I'm definitely never going to stop making them. Hopefully we can get a few more sets for the first of every month so I'm able to show a few up in my hand rather than just put the image up on screen. And another thing I'd like to go over just quickly towards the end of this video. I have been talking for 10 minutes, which when I'm not showing off any Lego, tends to feel a lot longer than it is. I'd just like to go over a few things that I actually have to hand for keeping my Lego. And when I record videos, what I record with and what's whirring in the background that you don't necessarily see in the video. So I do have a few cleaning supplies and the first one is going to be a bit confusing to some people. But I do actually keep a lint roller to hand. And this really helps before I record the video just to dust down my map, pick up any little bits that perhaps I will have missed. It stops them getting into the air and then landing on another Lego set. And they're actually really handy for the Lego roads in the city. Of course, when I've got some vehicles studded down, they're not too great. But just to run over them real quick and for the tighter areas of your Lego displays and especially the ones with studs and that, I find... A brush doesn't always get the job done as best as it could. So I actually have a keyboard gel, which is just meant to clean keyboards. You sort of slab it down. It picks up any dust and any other little bits. And this is what I use for my dioramas and the streets on the Lego City where you've got all the studs. You can even break a chunk off, get it between minifigures and just pick up any of the loose dust. Make it look as clean as it does because even though I do have an air purifier running quite often in the background... It's not picking up all the dust out of the air and it's only a little one because it's 
only a little room and we don't need an industrial sized one so it's not perfect it doesn't clear the air of dust immediately and even the dust that it is clearing is sort of brought back into the room every time we walk in every time we move about because we are the ones creating all the dust i also have a dehumidifier just in the back again just keep the lego in pristine edition i don't want any damp corners of lego bricks or perhaps if my hands weren't exactly dry when i've bought something in i just don't want any problems with it and lego isn't exactly meant to be kept in a humid environment so we just make sure that especially if it's raining outside or some water has made its way in the room i really don't know how it would but it just keeps the room mostly dry and it's actually hidden behind all of the sets here that little white thing up there next to hedwig is the dehumidifier so it just helps keep the lego last longer and something that you don't see in videos because my desk is always a mess in fact i'll probably make a video on it tomorrow because that is a whole story for another time my desk has always got random lego builds from videos long gone i have a few like bad batch models which that video must have been at least a week or two ago because it feels like it was forever and bad batch is still not here it's coming though it's coming very soon and i am excited for it but i do actually have a keyboard and mouse tray which not only clips on my desk so there's no screws and i'm not drilling any holes anywhere but also allows me to put my keyboard and mouse lower than my desk put it under it so when i'm building with lego i can just push that under my desk and i've got the whole desk space rather than what i used to do which you might have seen in a few of my very older videos put the keyboard to the side put the mouse on the top of my computer just sort of shuffle them off my desk and i still have the odd lead from my monitor just in the back corner which sometimes makes a cameo but for the most part the keyboard and mouse stay on the keyboard and mouse tray i can then slide that under when for instance i'm recording a video as i would be sat sort of half in when my keyboard and mouse tray comes out but i do find myself using it a lot as an extra shelf for lego if i'm building something a bit more complicated like a custom mech i normally have four or five of the elements the arms legs or torso that i'm not working on on my keyboard and mouse tray and then be building one of the other elements on my desk that also has again all the old bad batch marks a few of the vehicles that i haven't used for my city yesterday i do have that jurassic park jeep still on my desk amongst pretty much everything else so i'm sure you'll see that in tomorrow's video as i definitely want to show you just how messy lego can be i am not the tidiest person anyway with anything else so you might have seen the odd thing just floating in the back where i forgot to clear it up before i start recording and it honestly is a mess well spent because i have so much fun making these videos building things outside of videos there's still so many things that i haven't shown off in videos that I might have to make a backlog video just showing off everything I've updated off the camera. But I also use just a basic mic to record my videos. It's nothing fancy. I think the mic itself probably costs 20, 30 quid on Amazon. And it does the job at the level I'm at now. I'm not making money off these videos. It'll definitely be different if I do ever get to a stage where I can do this as a full time job which if you subscribe right now you can help with because we are closing up on a thousand subscribers a few months time and i'm sure we're gonna smash it but i do just have this on a gooseneck which if you don't know what a gooseneck is it sounds very funny but it is this flimsy arm that just allows you to bend the mic however you want have it at a bunch of different angles and my phone itself is on a gooseneck which is why a lot of the time this background, if you try and line it up with a background of an older video, it just won't line up. I don't take the height and width of my phone and even a different angle sometimes it will be shown at. So maybe you see the light bulb hanging in a few videos. Maybe you see my dioramas in a few other videos. But I find for what I want, the gooseneck is the best option, especially when I'm displaying it over the desk. It just gives me a whole range of different angles and I do record all of my videos on my phone camera. It records 1080. I do have quite a cheap phone, so I can only get 30 frames. And again, that's something that when I start earning money off these videos, I'll definitely be aiming to improve, get it up to 60 frames. 
my city videos would be so much smoother if they were run at 60 frames and i'd also want to get some sort of stabilization because my hands aren't the best and do get very shaky so again i do apologize for all the shaky hands you've seen in the videos but the only thing i think i haven't mentioned is my ring light which i do use the clips on my phone i do still have my old one clipped above my desk so I just have a few different lighting options for when I'm recording. I could even probably show them, but the video might get a bit dark. All I use is this ring light here, which has this nice clip, which just clips over the camera, as you can see. And it just makes me look a lot better and a lot brighter than if I was just recording with daylight or even using my phone's flashlight. Now, the only problem with it is it only sort of lasts up to 45 minutes to an hour. So sometimes if I've been recording for longer than an hour, you'll see the light slowly dim. And honestly, if I'm recording for a few hours, I won't even notice it. So I will try and charge it between cuts. But if you do see the camera die off to the end, I am sorry. I just haven't noticed the camera is dying. In fact, I don't even know how long we've been recording. It feels like it's coming up to the half an hour mark. So I will keep this short and snappy. But basically we've got some giant mocks to come we've got a load more display updates i do want to upgrade my gear a few months down the line so do hit subscribe so you can support the channel the best way you can and that is just by honestly sticking around seeing what we've got next and there is so many awesome videos i've got planned all the way forward to september and i even have a few video ideas planned for december of this year yes I'm looking forward to Christmas already, but to be fair, these ideas are from last December. The, the ideas I couldn't squeeze in the last two months and have now shuffled forward to this Christmas. So I am so excited to see what we can do this year and all the different milestones ahead of us. We're going to get a bunch of different giant mocks done and I'm going to try out a few different other styles of video as we continue to grow because there's just so much more I want to get done this year, of course. Happy two years on YouTube and thank you to everyone that stuck around for six months of daily uploads tomorrow. I am really enjoying the daily uploads because even just after I've done a video, I think of so many different ideas and you probably only see about a quarter, 20% of my ideas that actually get made into videos. So hopefully as we go forward, especially towards the end of the year, it's normally when I recycle some of my ideas that I've been before because there's not as many Lego sets. So do stick around to see some more awesome Lego content. Thank you to all 600 plus of you that are subscribed and the thousands of you that tune in to my videos. So that is all for me. Sorry for the long and I guess less Lego video, but this is the last channel update for another six months. Perhaps I'll do another one when we hit a year of daily uploads. So do make sure you are subscribed for more awesome Lego content. And may the bricks be with you always. Thank you.